yes right any questions here so we said that you can write a function so whenever you change this function a little bit right you can write this function can be written as this expansion it can be written as this series then we said this series has infinite terms so we want just some of them so we said okay let us truncate it here only we don't want gradient onward terms okay but we'll very frequently see that this term is often missed right whenever there are issues with gradient descent most of the times this term if you add that that will rescue most of the times not always of course all right so with this any questions in what we had done in the last class all right then what is gradient descent so see if you want to bring alpha into picture here how can you bring can you write that equation with alpha this equation can you write this whole thing with alpha where alpha is the learning rate super simple to do right so you simply do alpha delta x so let me not touch that let me just write here what you can simply do is f of x plus alpha delta x is equal to i mean this can be written as f of x plus what was the next term guys um, alpha delta x what else transpose gradient of f is that it right so we don't want higher order terms but let us write guys uh, we will have 1 by 2 factorial here what else so i can take alpha inside that does not hurt me transpose what was the next thing del 2f and then again del x alpha right so this basically gives me i, I can keep um, so i can take alpha outside right uh, what i can do is I can take alpha outside and that gives me alpha square here. So this gives me, I mean it is the same thing, it is exactly the same thing that we have written above because you can always choose delta x to be very small. But you want this control, you want this knob with you. So that is why we are trying to separate this alpha, else it is the same equation. This is uh, alpha square. Okay. This is what we have. Now we have truncated it until here and this is what we use in gradient descent. So what is the equation, what is the algorithm for gradient descent? Yes. Yes. What is the algorithm for gradient descent? So, it is basically repeat what? Basically, those two equations, which is W equal to W minus alpha grad J, right? And repeat until convergence. And what does convergence mean?
see I am not separate I mean I am not separately writing B's here right, but they are understood to be there. So, repeat until convergence this is what you keep on doing wherever your W converges. So, wherever the algorithm converges what does that mean? In this course, this course is much more advanced than a basic deep learning course. Okay. So, we would not be talking about minimas too much after a certain uh, lecture of num number of lectures. Okay. Right now, we are talking about minimas though. So, repeat until convergence, what does convergence mean here? your algorithm should stop that is what convergence means for algorithms. So, algorithm should stop in which case will it stop? Right del j becomes 0 can alpha become 0? Chedin bar minus 1. Right. So, w equal to w minus alpha grad j. Now, right. So, alpha can it be 0? It would not be 0 because you defined it to be greater than 0. Okay. So, it would not be 0. This guy, this guy can be 0. In this case, when this term goes to 0. So, when this term goes to 0, basically it is this guy that goes to 0, right. Alpha is by definition a quantity greater than 0. So, w equal to w, what does that mean? That means, no change is happening on the right hand side, left hand side is stuck on the same value, it is not going to change anymore, right. So, when your grade j is 0, w new equal to w old. So, it is not going to change any further your algorithm has basically converged. Does it mean we have reached to a minima? We know it even from 11 12th calculus that gradient equal to 0 does not mean it is a minima. It can be a maxima, it can be a point of inflection, it can be and, and if you talk about in general it can be a saddle point, it can be plateau. All right. So, repeat until convergence this. Now, how do we write our training loop? How do we incorporate this algorithm in our training loop? Now, I will come to j. So, let us say again we are talking about that same j w square. So, w square plus b square j. So, my j right now is a function of uh, w and b and it is w square plus b square. How does that j look like? See all these values are here. So, w I mean where does this circle lie? Only in w b plane it does not go to j. It always remains at j equal to 0. Okay? Now, but how will my function look like? My function will be a bowl shaped function, right. And you have for every circle here, for every circle here, you have the same set of values here. So, let us say for this circle value at one point is 18, then on this whole circle value of j will always be 18. Okay. These are those contours that have the same value of the function. <coughs> what is this? What is this equation of a circle? Right? This is equation of a circle. So, w square plus b square equal to. So, if you are talking about a circle, if you are talking about a circle, you will write w square plus b square equal to 
some constant c square right so that means w and b will change in a manner that this particular constant remains the same how are you defining j w square plus b square but no matter how w and b are changing they will always remain c square for this circle so for a circle here with center at 0 comma 0 j will take exactly the same value which is basically c square and now can c change see it is c for this circle it becomes c1 for this it becomes c2 for this so you have infinite such values because you have infinite such circles questions okay so now how do we apply gradient descent here i mean okay we know how do you apply gradient descent here but let's say we want to train our machine learning model now how do we do that Help me write that equation now, those four lines, again they, they will have two lines are common here. So until convergence compute j compute grad j and then update. So this update is same as gradient descent. And now we know where is this equation coming from. This equation is coming from Taylor series. You could have done much more, but we do not do that. Okay. So, how do we incorporate these two now? This is trivial because this equation requires grad j. So, you need to compute grad j. So, this is fine. How do you do this? How do you do this? Everybody should know. How do you compute grad j's? Which algorithm? Which algorithm? See that is why you should speak because at most you will be wrong. So back propagation now compute j. How do you compute j? Yes. You so there is a separate algorithm for computing grad j which is called back propagation. This one? No. You compute grad j here. So, once you have computed grad j, now update this equation. You will compute grad j in forward propagation, that is what you are saying. y minus okay right right hmm. what happens to others See, forget multi-layer, I, I do not even know what is a multi-layer neural network. Right now, I have just these two variables. Okay. What is unknown in this equation? Alpha is known, W is always known because I will always initialize it to something. So, W is known, the only quantity unknown is and left hand side is of course unknown by definition because left hand side is known, then what do you do? Right? So, this guy is unknown. 
if this is the unknown thing where are you computing it in this step right so we'll talk about we'll take this offline i won't go into this in this class but how many of you still have doubt ki back propagation we don't do it here how many we say we don't do it here quite a lot how many of you say we do it here all right then we'll take this offline after the class okay so compute j or maybe i don't know what we are getting from taylor series is that you can rely on just gradients else you would need terms that have hessian and higher order terms but taylor series is coming here and telling you that see if your alpha is small delta x is small then alpha square will become even smaller so let's say if your alpha is 0.0001 so alpha square will become 10 to the power minus 6 so these terms they become so small that you can actually ignore and retain just these two so when you say i am making a, a change of alpha times delta x my function has changed by this much that's what we are using there more questions all right so where does training come into picture now so let's say in earlier days of machine learning let's say pre deep learning era before 2011-2010 in fact even before 2012 <clears throat> how would you run gradient descent epoch so this until convergence is basically for loop for epoch 1 to whatever let us say 100 repeat this now are we actually able to visualize like we are drawing it here you are not able to visualize any of these things so which curve comes and help you Remember those three curves I had drawn in machine learning class, which, which were those three graphs? First was, first was that you just plot data, right? So that was your scatter plot. <coughs> just plot data, but this only gives you insight. The second thing was, you plot W and J. So, let us say it looks like this and then third thing that you plot was and this is the most important thing. You have on this axis epochs and j and we want value of j to be monotonically decreasing. Okay? This is how we infer convergence here. There is no way for us to figure out whether we have reached some at some important point or not. The only way to figure out for us is to look at this curve. See, if delta j is small, what does it mean? See, so let us say I have reached somewhere here. I have reached something of this kind. Okay? And assume this is not coming up. This is just going down or remaining the same. How do I interpret this curve? That means, no matter how much I run this code now, my value of j is not changing. So, most likely it will not change even if I run it further. All these are hypotheses, right? It might start shooting up, it might start going down, nobody knows. But from this patch, what I can figure out is that it is not changing anymore. So, most likely it has come to a place where gradients are not helping me because gradients most likely have become 0. Because if grade, if grades were changing, W would be changing, W would be changing, I will be going to different points and if I will be going to different points, most likely I will be taking different J's unless what has happened? 
remember if you have if you have a function like this this we did in ai so let's say if you have something like this if you are here gradient descent will take you here right but if you are here you see the neighborhood my gradients are zero this is not a local minima not a local in some ways all these infinite points are at local maxima but this is you call this a plateau don't call this maxima or minima most of the times deep learning training is stuck in here because you have millions or billions of dimensional vector spaces you get stuck in plateaus this is one dimensional counterpart of what might be a 100 million dimensional vector space okay if you start here where will gradient descent take you here right and so on so this is the most important curve because we are not able to observe this if you are in 1 million dimensional you will not be able to draw this anyway and so on so i want to see this kind of curve how does this algorithm help me do this compute j so let's say i computed j i am starting with epoch 1 that means i am randomly initializing my w's and b's to be something what is that something small numbers close to 0 so you start with it that is your first epoch let's say you start here you did all this what happens next so compute j this part is done this part is done for the first iteration compute grad j how will you compute j by the way okay see at my leisure i'll go to neural networks so if you have this neural network and this should help us with back propagation thing as well so it's a fully connected network assume this is where you have y hat and this is where you have your xi yi so there are m number of examples you have this neural network how will i compute my yi you give input as xi pass it through this network you will get some yi is that enough is that enough no you have to still compute you have to still compute what we call j or l right cost function loss function error function whatever you call it that is a function of y hat and in case of classification it also incorporates in fact most of the problems that we do are classification so you will so this j or l will be a function of y hat and y now y is something given to me so that is a number that is given to me or a vector that is given to me what about y hat y hat is a function of all my w's and b's here all my w's and b's here right so j is a function of all my w's and b's basically this j is a function of that so this is called computing loss this direction is called forward propagation now what happens in the backward propagation you will come in this direction right and uh, what will how will you compute this see if if the prediction of your algorithm on this example was right what will happen 
loss will be close to 0. So, that means I do not have to tune my w's and b's too much because they are already right values. But if loss is high, somebody is making a mess here, they need to be changed. All right. So, you will compute what? You will compute grad j's. How will you compute? So, I have 3, 6 here, 4 here, 3 here, 1 here. How many parameters will I have? What is the size of my gradient? 6, 4, 3, 1. So, 6, 4, I mean 4, 6 are 24 plus 4, 28 plus 12, 40 plus 4, 44, 44, 44, 47, 4 cross 6, that gives me 24 multiply to say 24 plus 4 that gives 28 plus plus 12 plus 3 that gives me 43 47 okay so 47 करा इसको वापस नाउ कमिंग टू बैक प्रोपेगेशन कमिंग टू बैक प्रोपेगेशन हाउ मेनी पैरामीटर्स आर देयर 47 ओके सो दिस इज वैल्यू ऑफ माय लॉस सी आई एम इंटरचेंजेबली यूजिंग these things right i won't use this but i still might you need to compute what loss with respect to you want to compute the gradient i mean derivative of or partial derivative of loss with respect to all these variables why by all are affecting this loss function if all are affecting this loss function, you need to upgrade all of them. So, I need del L by del W1. How many W's were there total? 4, four 3, 1. So, 47 minus 8, 39. So, I will need how many such terms? Right now, I have not vectorized this. And similarly, I will have right. How will you compute all this? How will you compute all this? L is a function of y hat. y hat is a function of if you talk about directly it is function of just these three. But those guys are computed because of something else previously. So, you will have chain rule I am not doing this again here okay? or shall we? See, back propagation is something that koi bhi aap ko agar serious candidate samajh raha hai, right? For any job, for any MS, PhD, they expect you to know back propagation. Ki aap 
पेन पेपर पे चला के बता पाओगे कि सी दिस इज हाउ बैक प्रोपगेशन इज बिंग डन यू मे नॉट डू इट इन दी सी द वे ऑल दीज थिंग्स पाइटॉर्च टेंसर फ्लो द वे दे डू इज दे इनकॉर्पोरेट so so they solve this using what is that algorithm paradigm one is greedy dynamic programming okay because you can write things as a function of so you can do this recursively so they write it using dynamic programming but we don't need that what we need is i should be able to compute by hand everything if i am able to do this I am done. Can I keep this as homework? Yeah, we have done this before. Okay, back propagation. All right. So you have all these values. What will be the next step? You have all these values. What will be the next step? Update. Okay. Now I'll go back. and fix this mess this i had made i don't need 47 values i need just one vector of size 47 cross 1 right so all this will be in just one vector first value this second value this 39 values all the way until this and then eight values so this will be just a one vector of size 47 cross 1 and what will be the size of this vector this w 47 cross 1 what will be the size of this w right normal matrix multiplication has to be taken care of all right so this is what we have <coughs> coming to this now in old good old days before deep learning era before 2012 you did not have that many examples so what you could do is one epoch would mean one pass over the whole training data you do this maybe after a couple of minutes you will get this value this value this value and then you reach somewhere here you say i am not changing too much so the learning has stopped so if the learning has stopped what does it mean in the context of machine learning that learning has stopped right w's are not getting updated right so we have here now what happens in this deep learning era so this this algorithm is called what this is batch gradient descent <clears throat> this doesn't work these days why i mean okay it works but it is not used these days why <clears throat> right so if you have millions or billions of examples right in your data set then what will happen see let us see this from a training perspective now where is the training ha ye bhi to hai compute j i initially computed j how am i defining my j now go back to mean squared error good old mean squared error which is basically a function that is same as w squared plus b square because that will be also be of the same type just that you will have some some other terms here as well of degree lesser than 2 but but the nature of the function is same so so if the nature of the function is same what does it mean what will be the difference between w square plus b square and that function will that be also convex 
this is convex will that function be also convex yes or no yes, yes. will that also be ball shaped yes then difference kya hoga your minimum might shift right what you are drawing here with centers you can you know translate it around all right now right so you do it for one epoch you come here will you necessarily come here will you necessarily come down no right you can even go here right but eventually what we want is we should have something like this but if you are doing gradient descent and if you have taken right learning rate and if it's a convex function you will most likely see this so this is the best path that we can imagine but you know best never happens right so in this case if you see in this case if you see gradients are such that in this case if you see gradients are such that they are always passing through the minima so this is my gradient gradients are basically perpendicular to my concentric circles at any point so they are always passing through this circle no matter where you take the gradient because any normal any normal to a circle always passes through its center and every tangent to a circle is perpendicular to the line joining that point and the center which is basically the normal okay so basically you are doing this line search on this line given correct value of alpha you can reach to minima in just one step your minima lies here we don't know how will you choose alpha but it is possible that if that alpha is correctly chosen in one step you will reach here it will never happen right but there is a theoretical possibility and we are in best of the regimes we won't see these kind of things later now compute j compute grad j update if you have let's say 1 billion examples every example takes 1 millisecond how much example will my corpus my, my training data set take 10 to the power 6 seconds how many seconds are there in a day 86400 whatever so ek lakh bol do it will take how many days 6 days 6 days to see very first point after 6 days you realize my alpha change karna bhul gayi thi <laughs> all right so what do you do here Hmm? How do we solve this problem? So, what is the other side of the spectrum? There is this one side of the spectrum when you can take just one example as a one example. for update this is which algorithm is this batch gradient descent Which one is this? Stochastic gradient descent. Is this good? What will happen with this guy? So, in this case, if you have 1 billion examples, 
you will be updating w's for every example how will my curve look like so now if you go to machine learning papers these days you you will see less emphasis on epoch you will see more emphasis on you know number of training iterations number of training steps something like this okay epoch will be hidden out there somewhere but they will always be talking about in the number of training iterations or number of training steps so this is what it means how often are you updating right now so this was the first example you start from here what might happen next <coughs> sorry ye kya hoga can it something like this this is the best that can happen right because if you take average you are still following what batch gradient descent was doing but it can also happen like that okay i don't want it anything can happen now can you help me understand these two spikes ki just in the previous iteration i had this now i have this why why will you have these ups and downs hmm and why don't you see ups and downs here <coughs> in this case like you said take average of all the examples if you are gradient descent if you are doing gradient descent gradient descent will certainly take you in a direction where the value of the function will decrease unless you have chosen learning rate to be so high right that it increases otherwise there is no way to increase it will only decrease so it will keep on decreasing in this case in this case what you have is my first example was good loss was low on that it was cat in the image my algorithm prediction says it is cat in the image so my j is low next one there is a cat in the image my exam my prediction says there is no cat i will be penalized heavily so loss function will increase next time i have a good example loss function will decrease so you'll keep on alternating between good and bad but why are we eventually decreasing all these spikes and the distance between them is also decreasing why because as you keep on learning your w's are stabilizing towards the better values okay you don't do this you don't do this in fact this is what mathematicians study mathematicians if you go to math papers if you go to optimization journals or if you go to conferences they work on this which is stochastic gradient descent now stochastic gradient descent mathematicians will say there are m examples what is the next phase you choose one example randomly uniformly from these m examples so what you say is that all these examples are independently and identically distributed iids that means what is the probability of choosing any example it is 1 by m in the next iteration what is the probability of getting chosen the exact same example 1 by m because it is you are replacing it back it's not that first example if you have taken out you will not replace it you will replace it and then you will always choose from m examples this is the algorithms that mathematicians study what computer scientists use nobody studies not even themselves 
right this is a big gap between theory and practice Math what mathematicians study we don't use what we use they don't study so sgd the way it is implemented in everything you take your m examples randomly shuffle it so you have taken one permutation of all these m of those m factorial permutations you have taken one and if m is large m factorial is super large for all practical purposes you will not repeat the same sequence again okay now <clears throat> you exhaust first example second third fourth you don't do it by replacement right first example is gone then second then third so you take one permutation of m examples and feed it sequentially so this is how we actually train once you have gone through this whole cycle of the complete uh, training data you start over again that is the start of your second epoch is this a efficient algorithm to work with no this updates just too often we don't want those, those many updates either so what we do is somewhere in between so for example if you take number of examples equal to 64 and that takes us to mini batch gradient descent and in tensor flow or wherever you go this guy is called stochastic gradient descent so when you are using any of the frameworks you are actually using mini batch gradient descent but that is called stochastic gradient descent and you do it using with or without replacements without replacements okay i think it is enough for today we'll start from